Samantha has like a lot of books and they're just like workshops that he's done with people. And then it's just been recorded into book format, you know, oh. for the most part. So there's like, it's teaching you, um, the, the more books that you read, you'll see how they, they interlace with other teachings. Right. Yeah. Great book. And then the Mind Gladiators, another great book. Uh, I, I got into Rampa in, in the 90s when they were putting a lot of CDs and tapes and things out. So you would get tapes or CDs and you can actually watch and they would explain. And I really got into it and then I started buying the books. And usually I'll get into things for a period of time and then the universe got me on a certain path and it just shuts off. And it's just like I got no more desires. So I read and studied really lots of it. Then I went on a, like I say, a path and sort of steered me to here. And I would tell Cindy about Rampa every now and then. And we ended up buying the one book and I'm like, you need to read this. There's lots of answers. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, it's there. I think four years later, I read it. And then she four finally years. decided to read one. And then it's like, she got into a few of them now she's trying to make sure we have all the books so yeah because we're not taught our, it's it's oh. our brain it's here but even as children we don't have our parents teaching and showing us like my granddad would try to teach me as a child and he didn't have any material or anything to refer to so <clears throat> he would do his best to help me to <clears throat> navigate and learn these things and he'd always send me to different people to use my mind to think and to listen so uh, when I read some of these things, I'm like, oh, yeah, my granddad taught me this just in a little bit of a different format. And so, but that actual realizing your mind and it sits inside you and it has millions and millions of doors and eyes and all kinds of things. And which door do you want to open? Which one do you want to use or work with? And all these other kinds of things. So it really, really makes you go deeper in. But once you start realizing you can change your reality too, it's like when you learn the long thought, anything you focus on, you stay on it long enough, you're going to, you're going to change or you're going to manifest and create. And I say people like their comforts and they don't want to spend a long time doing something. So the yeah. long thought, a lot of people don't work with. The first time reading the book, a book, uh, you read it from the perspective that you are at that moment. When you're done that book, you've changed because you've got yeah. some new information inside of you. So I'm doing the uh, that elixir called love, another Ramtha book, and I'm doing it with like a like kind of like a podcast almost, just me and uh, one other girl are doing it. <laughs> it's really interesting on how she was clear that she missed that part and then I brought it up and she's like oh my gosh I didn't understand that when I read that so it's it's interesting when you go over it again and again like you'll start to see it differently and it, it expands open so yeah definitely some of these books you can reread um more than you can reread them yeah yeah I, I, I told Cindy and Mercedes when they read it I'm like read it five seven times whatever it's each time you read it you're going to get something deeper because once you get it in here it's going to sit for a while and you question and then you go back later it's going to open up you're going to see more and it's going to do this and in some of these ramp the books you have to go keep going and visiting the information for it and to question it because it's going to take you somewhere <clears throat> and you're going to discover things and that's the whole idea about learning and growing is using using the uh, full capacity of the brain instead of five percent of it you're using you know somewhere up to 80 percent which you really really want to do hey I, when you do crash courses there's so many techniques and new words and that and and it scrambles because it's like you're you know you're stepping into new things and you have ideas and and certain things a lot of us have abilities we already have this capability we just don't have the words or references or um how to walk in and out and, and do it continuously because you're as you're doing that you're going to discover more and more and more and that's something that goes on it, it shifts and changes all these different things and it just happened that with my granddad he was always doing that with me as a little child so it just became a normal way of being for me and I would just question the universe and I would just shift in and out of things and I did it all my life to this point where I'm at so 
to me, I'm always saying it's normal. Everybody should be this way. But then people, you know, they find Reiki and they're like, oh my God, Reiki. Do you know about Reiki? I'm like, yeah, that's like old news. <laughs> You know, or somebody says, oh, do you know, astro travel or journeying. I'm like, been doing it since I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, my granddad didn't say, oh, this is what we're doing. We would just sort of go in an altered state and whatever would happen. And it was fun for me because it was like going flying or whatever. And all these different realities. So this is when in crash courses, you start listening and, and the biggest thing I find about courses is, is you meet really lots of different people and in all those people there are certain people that will really really connect with you on some level and they have knowledge so you get to share with them and then there's a few more and it starts opening those different pathways and you get to experience and try things with them where you feel safe that's sort of like here what we're doing we feel safe at a certain point we relax and we allow things to happen but that's the door openers. When you're starting on this path, you have to open doors. You have to challenge yourself. You have to be receptive. And the universe has always been trying to give to you. But somewhere as a child, you shut it off. And you went into this human tunnel vision and you follow or you chase certain things. And yet everything is always coming in. It's always flowing. And the universe doesn't violate that. The universe never, ever comes in and bullies you around it, it always allows you to choose and people they get into protection and I'm like it's like putting tar all over your body and you're walking around you know and you're just covered in tar and things are coming and sticking to you and you really think you're protected but it's so hard to get off and you don't know what's there after a while and the universe is trying to give you all your answers and do things in a lot of this stuff is bouncing off you but you're attracting and absorbing other things you don't really want and this is where I'm like, just allow this, the universe, there's, there's something beautiful that's always flowing. It's just a really, really beautiful thing. And the more receptive you are, the more these kinds of things go on and you start becoming conscious of there's something else there. You can feel it. It, it, it does something. It triggers and it just wants to pull you in. This morning, Cindy became aware of energy. We're sitting here and we're having a really cool discussion. And then she brought up the hijabs. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So she's talking about how women all over the world are shaving their hair because oh, they yeah. ended up killing this one girl because she wasn't wearing her hijab right. So now women all over the world are protesting and they're shaving their heads and women are taking off their hijabs. And so we went into there and the energy's on because the whole world is angry and mad and we opened up that space so our whole space ended up and you can literally feel it dropping into this really really heavy energy and Cindy's like oh the energy change and she was able to explain it where before she wouldn't map so it was really really neat to see that comprehension tension and awareness my question on it was was it the topic of conversation that dropped the energy or did the energy drop beforehand and then that topic came up as a way of matching the energy that had dropped so he's like no it was the conversation that dropped the energy <laughs> yeah because like, it opened oh. up because the anger that's on the earth when you open up to those different planes and you put your focus there something is going to come through and this is where you learn to put your, your thoughts on the light. You learn to put your thoughts on the future. You learn to put your thoughts on, well, how can we change this reality? Or how can I be a channeler or a healer or energy worker? How can I support somebody else to move through fear to know they're going to get through the future? So as you're putting your thoughts, are you going to keep attracting? And there's people and things that will show up. And this is where we have to train ourselves to use our minds in the right way. Because like the saying goes, energy flows where attention goes. And so if you're like fighting the government all the time, and I, I know Tracy can't help but like be affected by the government. She's a farmer in Canada, <laughs> part of the farming industry in Canada. Um, it's like that anxiety, you know, that kind of stuff will always be there. So how can you go beyond that yeah. when it's so thick and heavy and around mm -hmm. you, right? Yeah. We're in a biosphere and you're looking at 7 billion people amplifying energy. So you can go into there and you can participate or you can know it's there and you can carry on doing what you're doing.